For the past few years, I've had a dedicated server at HostGator. Um, they're quite expensive. You can see I was paying $174 a month here. And a lot of this price is attributed to the fact that this is managed hosting. So if you get any trouble with configuring your server, such as you know configuring email or con configuring Apache um, to serve up your websites, I have found them to be pretty helpful with that. Um, they have phone support and also um, online chat, but the uh, response times are really slow now. You could be waiting up to half an hour or more. And a lot of times you'll find that, especially if you're a developer, that you know more than they do, um, even though they're supposed to be system administrators. So over time, I've just been calling their support less and less. Um, it basically wasn't calling them anymore. I was doing all of the you know sysadmin stuff myself. So it really wasn't worth it um, to pay for managed hosting anymore. So we can see this server at HostGator was um, dual core processor and we have four gigabytes of RAM here. As I said, I was paying $174 a month for that. I've now moved over to DigitalOcean and we can see here at DigitalOcean the same speed, uh, dual core processor and four, gigabyte, four gigabytes of RAM. I'm now paying $40 a month, so I have a huge savings there. Few of the advantages of the HostGator, um, because it's a dedicated server, not a VPS, um, we have a very large hard drive here, 500 gigabytes, as opposed to DigitalOcean, 60 gigabytes. And we also only have four terabytes of data transfer here at DigitalOcean, whereas I had 10 terabytes at HostGator. Now on this HostGator server, um, I was doing all of the email here, uh, sending and receiving. It, it, there was an email server running on it. Um, it was also configured, you know, it was pre-configured, pre-installed by HostGator when I got it. So that was really convenient. Um, they also have webmail clients and, you know, some other conveniences. However, at this new server, um, by default, there is um, no email server configured for you. And you can set one up. I found an article here. Um, basically, you can install Postfix and Dovecot and some other things. Um, to set up your own email server on there for sending and receiving email. But there is a lot of things that you need to do here. You're going to need to configure all of that yourself. Um, that's not going to be easy. I'm sure that you would learn a lot if you were able to do all of this. So you're going to need to install Postfix, Dovecot. Um, you're going to need to um, you know, create those user accounts for you know, fetching the email using IMAP or POP3. Basically, there is going to be a lot of work to do here. And even if you were able to do all of that, um, you would still have the disadvantage that your server that is primarily responsible for as a web server, so to take HTTP requests and give HTTP responses, this server now has the added responsibility of working as an email server. So um, your processor is going to be used by a number of different things. First of all, I'm already using it as my database server. I don't have that on a remote server. So the server is going to be running a database server. It's going to be running a web server. Um, if I'm using something like memcache, I might have you know a caching server running there. So this server is really already doing a lot. So I think it's going to be a lot better if we move the sending and receiving email completely off of this server. We can block those ports. Um, so the only ports we have open is going to be 80 for H regular HTTP requests, 443 for secure requests, and also 22 so we can shell into our server. So for that reason, I've decided to delegate um, the requirement of an email server off to some third-party services, and I'm using Mandrel to send the emails, and I'm using a website called Zoho um, for receiving emails. So I have now configured um, the Mandrill and the Zoho services. They're all working fine. I've also configured um, my email client to send and receive um, using those two different services. Everything's working well. So I'm just going to show you um, how I did that in this video. Um, so you can take that load off of your web server and um, delegate that task to some third-party services. And I should also mention um, in both of these cases, it was completely free for me. So with Zoho, um, you can create a free account here. The um, account's emails can use up to five gigabytes of space. 
and you can, like I said, you can use a single domain with it and you can create up to 10 different uh, user accounts. So for example, um, at my uh, client work website at winterwind.com, um, right now I'm only use, I only use one email here, it's my own anthony at winterwind.com, but I could create up to nine more email addresses here for free with Zoho and we have up to five gigabytes of space. And that works fine if you're using POP to retrieve your emails. Because with POP, um, you have the option when you retrieve the email, it is going to send a delete request to the email server, and you are going to be able to uh, delete that email off of the server um, once you request it. And of course, you'll still have that email because it will be stored um, within your email client. Um, I'm using Thunderbird here, but you could also use Outlook as well. So because with Zoho, I'm continuously uh, retrieving the, the emails with POP, it's getting deleted from the server. So at no time am I going to um, exceed that five gigabyte limit. Um, so potentially I could just continue to use uh, the free account here indefinitely. They do have some other paid programs as well. And with if you have a paid account, um, you can host multiple different domains. However, in my case for winterwind.com, um, it seems that the free plan um, at Zoho um, could potentially work for me indefinitely. Now for the sending of email, I've chose to use Mandrill. Um, it has a very good reputation um, within web developers. Um, it is owned by MailChimp, I believe. And with Mandrill, you can also start with a free account. And I believe it's free for up to 12,000 emails a month. So you can send up to 12,000 emails a month and you don't need to pay anything. So I'm using Mandrill in two different places. Um, of course, um, in my website, um, I'm, using, uh, I'm using the SMT, MTP mail driver. Um, this application here is using Laravel. Um, other frameworks will have their own way of doing this. But you can see I've put in uh, the SMTP driver there. Our host is smtp.mandrillapp.com. The port you'll use is 587. Um, this from here, this is just um, who you're sending from. It's part of the email headers. It'll be sent from anthony at winterwind.com. And this doesn't have anything uh, to do with Mandrill's configuration. If I go down here, um, your username, this is the username you're connecting to the email server with. Um, that is just going to be um, your account name uh, with, uh, with Mandrill. And then for the password, you'll use one of the API keys. So if you log into your Mandrill here, you'll, you'll go to SMTB and API cred credentials. They'll give you all these cr credentials right here. And you can put these into your web application, and you can also put them into clients such as Outlook and Thunderbird. The SMTP password will be any valid a API key. So you can just click on the blue button down here, create an API key, and that is going to be the password that you're going to use. So just to sum up these two different services with Zoho, um, you have up to five gigabytes of space. But like I said, if you use pop to retrieve it and then you delete it from the server, um, you will likely never exceed that five gigabytes. And then with Mandrill, um, this is free for up to 16,000 emails a month. Most of us uh, will never go over that uh, for transactional emails. And if you did, um, you know, it's not free after that, but the, um, the fee is not very expensive. So because I'm using these two different third-party services for sending and receiving email, my own server does not have to do anything with email anymore. So I'm just going to go over to Forge here. Um, this is basically um, an, a web app that um, is a visual layer for my server. And I can, um, I can do some actions on my server um, just through, through this website. Um, you'll see all of the ports I have open right here. Of course, the ones we need are SSH 22, so I can shell into the server. And we have 80 for regular HTTP requests and 443 for secure requests. But you can see all of these ports that I needed open for sending and receiving email before. If we were using something like Postfix on our server, um, I can now just close these. Um, so what, what's going to happen when I do this is these are the active firewall rules. So these ports are now going to be blocked on the server and we've just made our web server a little bit more secure. So I've showed you already how you can use Mandrill within your web application. 
um, using an SMTB driver. You'll just put in all of the Mandrel um, credentials right there and you'll be able to send email from that. I've tested this already and it works fine. This is much better than using um, the native PHP driver to send and receive um, to send emails. You'll find that those often go um, into the spam box at Gmail and uh, other places like Yahoo. They will just end the spam box. But using a trusted uh, email server such as Mandrill, um, you'll find that your users are going to get them every time. So I think what we can do now is we can go over to Thunderbird and I'm going to go into my options here. By the way, Thunderbird is a totally free email client. client. Um, it works very well on Mac and it's also um, it's also free for Windows as well. So I'm just going to go into the account settings here and I'm going to go first I'm going to go down to outgoing SMTP server. That's at the very bottom here. And you can have different um, SMTP servers set up here. You'll set one as the default. Um, right now uh, I have my default set to this Mandrill outgoing right here. So let's take a look at what I have right here. Um, the server name smtp.mandrillapp.com port is 587. Um, the username is my account to Mandrill. So the exact same things that I had in my PHP application um, we're going to put those in here. Let's just click edit. Um, like I said, you give it a name, uh, the server name it connects to, the port, uh, the connection security. Um, I have it on uh, start TTLS. That's working fine. Uh, maybe it should be SSL, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Authentication method is a normal password, and the username, of course, is my uh, Mandrill account username. So I think we can do a test here to make sure um, it's sending okay. So I'm going to send it from anthony at winterwind.com and I'm going to send it to myself. And that is going to be sent to uh, Zoho, which I have set up for receiving my emails. So let's just call this one a uh, screencast test. We have the body of the email right here and I'll click send. And it's going to need a few seconds to send here connecting uh, to the server and delivering the email. Okay, so that has been delivered now. So what I'll do now is I'll go over to Zoho and we will try to find that email. So um, we can see it's already arrived here. Um, Zoho has a nice web client so um, you could also access and read all of your emails from their web client here. But I think most people like to use something like Outlook or uh, Thunderbird. Um, however, we can see that right here and it's in our inbox. Now the problem with this going to the inbox here is after a certain amount of time and especially with people putting attachments to their emails, eventually you will go over the allotted 5 gigabytes there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back over to my Thunderbird and we are going to check the settings um, for receiving email. So click on account settings here and uh, this is the receiving one, anthony at winterwind.com and we're going to click on the server settings. Now the server type here I have, um, we have a pop mail server. The server name I'm retrieving from is pop.zoho.com. Um, we're fetching it on port 995. The username, the username is going to be um, your actually email address that you're retrieving from. So like I said with Zoho, you could have up to 10 email address. I could have sales at winterwind.com. I could have support at winterwind.com. Um, so here you're going to use the actual email address, not like Mandrill. Mandrill was the account name. Here you're going to use um, the email that you want to fetch from. In my case, it's anthony at winterwind.com. For connection security, it is on SSL, TLS, and the authentication method is password. If I go down a little bit lower here, you'll see this is really important. I have it unchecked, leave messages on server. So we want that unchecked. We don't want the messages left on the server. We want to send a delete request to that server and we want to have those messages deleted. So I'm going to click OK right here and we're now going to fetch that uh, mail that we just sent from the server and we're going to fetch it using pop. So I'm going to uh, click here just to receive that email. You can see at the bottom left here it's connecting, checking the inbox for new messages and it's downloaded that now screencast test. Now you remember with Zoho that was previously in my inbox. 
Now if I go back over to Zoho here now and we click refresh and I'm actually just going to jump around here. This is a uh, Ajax interface. So if I go back to inbox here, you'll see it's not in my inbox. And what Zoho does is when you retrieve that with pop, it's actually, it's not going to delete it uh, per se. It is going to get sent to the trash here. So now you can see um, my email here, the screencast test is in the trash and Zoho is going to periodically delete these for you. So we don't need to worry about this anymore. We've already fetched it. It's in our email client. It's in the trash now at Zoho and uh, you know, um, whatever their cycle is, um, these will all be deleted. Another really nice thing about using a dedicated um, third party email service is um, you can you have the option to fetch all of the message or just fetch the messages that are on the spam. So you can see Zoho here has detected a spam message, um, something about marketing right here. This is a spam message. They picked it up, it went into your spam box at Zoho, and um, when I fetched the mail from the server, it didn't fetch this one. It only fetches the messages that it doesn't think are spam. So if you don't use a server like this, um, not only you're going to have to configure your email server all by yourself, but you're also going to need um, to install some things like Spam Assassin um, to do your own, you know, you're going to get a lot of spam messages. You're going to have to configure all of that yourself so that, you know, spam message go to the spam box and you don't retrieve them. It's going to be a lot of work. So for myself, um, I don't want spam messages fetched and I also have a lot of clients. I don't want their um, emails to be bombarded with spam messages. So for me to use something like Zoho um, for their um, retrieving emails, that's also going to be really convenient for me because I'm not going to get emails from them telling them telling me you know they're they're getting tons of spam. That is being handled by this third party. So what we've done in this video is we've relieved our server from the task of sending and receiving emails. So our processor is not going to be used for that. Our memory is not going to be used for that, and we we're also able to block off those email ports like 25 and 110. Um, you can see my only active uh, ports right now are 80 and 443, which is um, used for the web server, and then 22 so that I can remotely shell into my server. So we've removed this burden um, from our web server and we've moved that task to these third-party services like Zoho. This is just an example. You could use um, another service if you found one and that was for retrieving the emails. Um, like I said, this might be free indefinitely for us, so a nice cost savings there. And with Mandrill, um, it also could be that you use this indefinitely for sending transactional emails because it allows you up to 16,000 a month. A lot of people are not gonna go over that. And if you did, then you will just start paying Mandrill um, the modest fee for exceeding that amount. And the last benefit is that you're going to save yourself a lot of time because you don't need to install and configure an email server on it. Um, you don't need to deal with uh, managing the spam. You don't need to maintain that. You've completely de delegated this task to third parties who are um, experts at this. They specialize in email and I think you will save yourself a lot of headaches um, managing your server in this way.